OK, we've got the pig's gut. Um, they arrived last night and uh, thawed out, and uh, the next step in the proceedings is to clean them, wash them off, hose them down, and that's what Cathy's doing at the moment down below. Dr Nigel Collins, biology teacher at King Charles I College, Kidderminster, has obtained a pig's entrails to demonstrate the digestive system to his Year 9 class. Many people can acquire materials from butchers, of course, I mean hearts and lungs and so on. Um, but we have the advantage in that we've been able to get a source directly from an abattoir. If you feel that something like this, that's so colourful, is something worth going after, um, then approach a local abattoir and, and you might be surprised at what people are prepared to do for you. The first priority is to thaw the guts out and give them a good clean. For anyone thinking of acquiring this sort of material for their own teaching purposes, hygienic storage and handling are of paramount importance. The entrails must be stored in a sealed box in a fridge, which is appropriately labelled and does not contain food. This is very convenient. Right. Okay. Immediately prior to the demonstration, the guts are brought to the vicinity of the classroom and arranged for display. We've got a towel in the bottom which has soaked up any of the juices, which we always do in the uh, fridge, always have that there, so that when it comes out it's pretty dry, um, there's no problem at all. Next bit is to actually start to lay it out on here. Right. <laughs> it's advisable to keep the intestines outside for as long as possible. And that's the top end. Whilst Nigel brings the students into the classroom, Cathy carries out the final preparation. There's a lot of mess and a lot of um, heavy lifting and a lot of hassle to this, but I feel that every minute of it's worthwhile for the wow factor, which we find so difficult to give kids in science now. Let's have a little think about uh, digestion. Before confronting his audience with a pig's entrails, Nigel prepares the ground by doing a recap of what they know about digestion. So we're going to explore this system, but let's get from you some of the things that may be going on within this gut. What sort of things are going to be happening in the mouth, apart from the teeth working on it? There's a carbohydrate skit uh, broken yeah. down in the mouth. Brilliant, right, OK, so we've got carbohydrates, it's breaking down this material. Thinking back to that original diagram, I want somebody to help me prove that there really is a one-way street from the tongue to the bum. I need a volunteer. OK, right, are you ready? Yep. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm ready. OK, right, right. What he's going to do is swallow this tube. OK, so here it goes. Can you see? It's actually going into his mouth. OK, so there it goes. It's going round past the appendix now, a bit further. OK, now, by now, we should be in the region of uh, seeing the fact that it's actually coming out the far end. And here it is. Look, over here. So it's proved that it's actually gone right the way through his gut. A round of applause for Thomas, I think. This animal was killed deliberately for this purpose, and in fact the whole biology department's policy is we don't do that. It's very important that Nigel establishes with the students that the pig, whose entrails they were about to view, was not killed especially for this purpose. It's always important to have a, a good awareness of their, their sensitivities and whether there are any sort of religious issues associated with um, using these particular animals and, and exposing them to these organs of, of these animals. Um, some children might be squeamish and uh, you respect that but try to coax them out of it and very often what happens is that you allow them to sit a little on the sidelines um, but they pretty soon get sucked into it. We kept this covered up, We've, um, we washed it off earlier on, um, it was frozen, in fact we are very lucky to have it. Having reassured the students that the animal was not killed for their benefit and checked that everyone is comfortable with what he's about to do, Nigel gets down to business. At the front end here, we've got the tongue, and usually around this, you find odds and ends, some, some little bits of, of the, the salivary gland. And then the next stretch of it is the larynx. It's right at the top of the windpipe, really tough and hard. That's the voice box, that's the piggy oink. OK, the oink of the piggy. And then as we come down the, the throat, and we can see that um, there are these rings of cartilage. And they're actually sort of D-shaped rings, and they're shaped like that, so that when the animal swallows and food goes down the esophagus, which is that tube, the moment that you swallow, you, you, you don't have any air flowing through your trachea because... It obviously makes sense to describe the digestive system from one end to the other stopping off at points of interest. Okay. So Nigel also enhances his demonstration with endoscopy images obtained from the Royal Free Hospital, London. Right at the very far end of it is the opening into the stomach. So this is the very bottom end of the, the esophagus and there's some mucus just sort of uh, sloshing around here. Mm -hmm. 
um, and here's the liver, and then eventually we come down to the stomach, which is sitting just below the liver. A very big muscular bag for, for pushing the uh, contents of the uh, digestive system around, and this is a, a layer of fat um, that overlays the, the, uh, the, the stomach, an incredible sort of tracery of, of, uh, of fat that um, extends right the way around here as well. Um, it's called the omentum, okay, this, this layer of, of fat here. Um, does anyone eat faggots? Do you recognise what this is? It's what's wrapped around the outside of faggots. Yeah, it's this amazing network of fat. You've got to admit that if you take that in isolation, it's actually an extraordinarily beautiful sort of piece of, of, of body. Yeah, with this sort of fat, it's almost like a piece of, a little piece of lace. These are some of the folds in the stomach wall. And when we set it uh, in motion, you can actually see the uh, mucus and the sort these, this is the mucusy sort of secretions, the stomach um, juices, the gastric juices, acid and so on being secreted into the inside. Let's work our way through the small intestine. And here is the, f the first section of gut, the, the, the duodenum. At this stage, special care is needed because the small intestine is very delicate and can rupture easily. Not something Nigel or the class will appreciate. We wouldn't be opening the gut at all. Um, there's little purpose really other than to show the lining. Apart from any um, potential health risks, I mean, the spillage of contents is, um, uh, leads to a, an instant um, evacuation of the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the, the pancreas um, that is uh, linked into the gut as well. There is in fact a hormone produced by the pancreas that is involved in looking after blood sugars. Okay, it's, it's the, the hormone insulin. So if you're a diabetic, this is, a, this is an organ that in fact is not functioning properly. From the duodenum, uh, we head onwards into, the, into the, the, the small intestine. Look at that extraordinary network of blood vessels. Amazing collection of blood vessels embedded in fat that are actually going to and then away from the, the small intestine. What are the molecules that they're picking up? Small soluble. Brilliant. So all of that is going to head into these um, blood vessels which eventually are going to link together in the hepatic portal vein, a big vein that is going to take them all the way up to the liver. And so you're looking along the small intestine and you can see the mucus just here in the duodenum as the muscles of the gut actually contract. This is the small intestine, um, taking a look at the, the wall with the ridges, and upon the ridges you have tiny little finger-like projection called villi, and then the villi have microvilli on them. Every cell has these tiny little projections to increase the surface area. Why does having a really big surface area help in the ileum? Uh, does it let all the nutrients pass through into the body? Great stuff. OK, let's go on. We've got a situation here, then, where we've added liquid to the gut in the mouth in the way of enzymes and mucus and, and, and alkaline secretions. We've added um, bile from the, the liver. We've added um, further digestive juices in the stomach with some more mucus. We've also added along the uh, length of the duodenum further juices. Here is more of the ileum and you can see here how liquid the content is. Nigel invites volunteers to participate in untangling a section of the small intestine. Plastic gloves and aprons are needed for what is, quite literally, an extension activity. So I'm just going to start cutting this connective tissue in between. And all we're going to do is unravel just this little bit of the gut, just to show you how very, very complicated it is. It's incredibly close packed. Keep your hand over the tray. Remember, keep your hands over the tray. Right, we'll just go for a little bit more to get everybody else in. Now you can see that we've still got miles to go. When Nigel does this demonstration outside, the ileum can be unravelled to several metres in length, but there is a risk. Even a slight tear of the ileum is very unpleasant. Oops, a daisy, right. We're going to stop at that. OK, just drop it back down very carefully, but don't drop it from a height. OK, right, gloves. Even if you don't have a spillage, it's essential that everyone involved washes their hands thoroughly. We've got um, a blind ending section just here, which is the cecum, and this is the point at which the, um, at which the small intestine joins into it. Um, so we've got the, the large intestine, the cecum first of all, no appendix, but let's just have a look at something else. Here's the cecum um, just here all around, and we're looking into the entrance to the appendix. So that's the, that's the entry into the appendix 
um, just in that point there. And then we're into the, the large intestine and you can see something happening here. There's the liquid end of it and it's impossible as it stands at the moment to actually unravel it because it's all held together just like these sections of the small intestine are held together by layers and layers of connective tissue and blood vessels. The same thing applies to the large intestine. You'd have quite a time actually snipping between the, the gaps to separate this out but basically you can see that it's starting to get thicker. Yeah. So here it's very runny, and as you work your way through here, remember we added lots of liquid along the length of the gut. By the time you get through to here, it's starting to dry out, so you're starting to form piggy poos at the far end. There's the, this is in fact the rectum, and we'll, and we come right down. The rectum's actually got some contents, but we'll, we'll not have anything more to do with the way of, in the way of touching any of that. Um, and then eventually you come right the way down to the very end of it all, and that's actually the, the pig's anus just there. Okay, so we've gone all the way from the tongue right the way through the system. Having completed the journey through the pig's digestive system, Nigel shows his audience a few slightly more unusual endoscopy images. And if you watch carefully, you can quite clearly see a bay leaf there. I can't understand how anyone could ever swallow a bay leaf, but this person has. Okay, so there's a, a view of a bay leaf actually within the colon. This is really amazing. Okay. So here we go. Watch carefully. Can you see it wriggling? It's a little parasitic worm, tiny little parasitic worm just wriggling around just there. Okay, just sliding around. Almost everyone in this room will have had, even in this part of the world, will have had a parasitic worm in them at some point, but often when you're really small. You Showing the students extra materials such as the obstructed colon or the parasitic worm is reasonably acceptable. But it's up to individual judgment and knowledge of the class as to whether one should talk about the sensitive issue of cancer. This is actually a cancerous growth, okay, just taking place just there. You can see the absolutely normal, healthy looking um, cecum over here, and then this section here where there's actually um, cancer of the, of, of the cecum. If you do manage to acquire a pig's entrails to demonstrate the digestive system, you may also like to think about demonstrating other organs. Finally, there is disposal of the intestines to think about. It's actually more straightforward than you think. It is a very straightforward of sort of uh, matter of multiple bagging it, you know, lots of poly bags around it, tying it off really securely. Um, and as far as environmental health um, inspectors are concerned, I mean, it can be d disposed of in, in the general refuse. That is the digestive system. What do you make of it? Any thoughts? I think it's a lot more colourful than I thought for when I first thought, so I thought it would be quite red because of all the blood. But it's actually quite green and in places and extremely colourful. Oh, I think it's great that we get to see this because like, it's really privileged to be able to see it because not many people get to see it. So. I think it's very interesting because this is the only place I'm going to ever be able to see all this. Great stuff, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much. <laughs> My advice is, uh, you know, go, go for it because uh, the students' reactions and interest in it is, um, is, is always wonderful to see. Bringing in this uh, excitement can uh, stimulate them to a greater interest in the biological sciences that they're studying.